cataractcoach.com. Cataract surgery on fellow cataract surgeons. Here's what I learned by doing cataract surgery for 83 fellow eye surgeons. Now here's a case shown complete start to finish. This is an ophthalmologist, a cataract surgeon. In fact, this is the tallest ophthalmologist I've ever met. Very, very sweet patient. And this patient ended up choosing a monofocal lens, which is largely what almost all ophthalmologists have chosen so far. And I need to update the title slide because I actually did 84. I did my 84th one this week. So ophthalmologists overwhelmingly choose monofocal eye wells. Out of the 84, I've had zero choose a trifocal or multifocal lens. I've had a handful choose extended up the focus lenses. And the vast majority, more than 90% for sure, choose to have a monofocal eye well. Now you can see the incision there being made with a diamond keratome. All these surgeons know for sure that they want a beautiful incision and a beautiful rexus. Here we go, measuring out this rexus here. If you look carefully on the cornea, there are some marks at the steep meridian. We are going to be placing a toric eye well here. So not only do these cataract surgeons or an ophthalmologist want a beautiful capsule rexus, they prefer a absolutely handmade capsule rexus over a femtosecond laser one. Now, obviously, as an ophthalmologist, you know that makes a lot of sense. It's stronger. And if you can control it and create a beautiful rex like we're doing here for this patient, this is the best option, not a femtosecond laser. And so though patients may be wowed by the word laser, we as cataract surgeons know better. So there it is, five millimeter rex measured exactly. So patients like this, ophthalmologists, always want their astigmatism addressed. Of course, there's no upside in keeping residual astigmatism with one exception. I had an ophthalmologist who was Plano minus two at some axis. And the patient liked to go around uncorrected. He's a fellow ophthalmologist. And he understands what he wants. So he said, no, just leave me the same. So post-op, we left the uncorrected still. He had what I call astigmatism on the brain. That's just how he saw the world. And he didn't mind. And he liked having those two distinct focal points. And Plano and then another one about minus two. So because of that, this patient was able to go around without glasses for most things, but albeit at a lesser image quality. Now, these surgeons know what they want. So in the example here, this patient is hyperopic to begin with. And this patient wants to be rather be plus a quarter instead of minus a quarter. So there you go. Nucus comes out pretty easily. That looks great. All of them want an intact posterior capsule as well, I assure you. But again, people who are myopic, if they want an amotropic outcome, they'd always choose to be a little bit minus, minus a quarter, maybe even minus a half. Whereas those who are hyperopic, like this patient, I showed the calcs to him specifically, and he said, no, I'd rather be plus a quarter instead of minus a quarter. So we chose that lens, and the patient ended up essentially Plano plus a quarter at some axis, so basically just slightly above uh, Plano, so plus 0.125 strictly equivalent. And so, again, they know what they want. If they're very, very myopic, I've had patients who are minus 10 or more, they tend to choose a little bit of myopia. Maybe make them minus one and a half or minus two post-op. That's very common. So to go from minus 12 post -op, pre op to minus two post op is just about ideal for these patients. Some of them do like a little bit of monovision. Now, what's interesting is these patients, these fellow ophthalmologists, they say the experience as a patient was totally different than what they thought. Isn't that interesting? So here we are polishing the undersurface of the, of the anterior capsule rim, get all those lens epithelial cells off. We want this to be absolutely pristine and beautiful. And they just said that obviously they understood every step what was going on because they, they do this surgery, but they said on the inside, it really was a lot more abstract than they imagined. They could tell the three microscope lights. They could tell when the eye well was going in because it looked like a kaleidoscope of pretty lights. But they said really didn't have too much other information while they're paying attention. And a lot of these ophthalmologists prefer to have very minimal sedation. And so some want the standard sedation, some want actually very little. So here's a monofocal torque lens being planted in the capsule bag. We'll get that lined up at the appropriate axis shortly. These ophthalmologists who have cataract surgery with me, by and large, they want to see a video of their own surgery. And I know this and I'm happy to provide it. And again, this video that we're watching, I did provide to the patient on post-op day one. I did it for each of his eyes, and he just wanted to have a video of his surgery, and he enjoyed it very much, so I was very flattered. And finally, cataract surgeons love pseudophagia. They say, undoubtedly, wow, the vision is fantastic. This is, I should have done this earlier. 
So even though we hear this from patients all the time, it's interesting to hear from a fellow ophthalmologist that, wow, it really is quite amazing vision, and they're very happy to be pseudophagic. So again, these are the pearls I've learned from doing surgeon fellow ophthalmologists. Um, again, now I did one very recently, a, a patient this week, and she came from out of state, the dense cataract uh, in her 80s, and it had pseudoxfoliation as well. So on that one, they want as little you know, trauma as possible, of course. Fortunately, that patient had very nice donor support, and everything worked out just great. But again, it's truly an honor and a pleasure to be, op- to a- be able to operate on a fellow ophthalmologist. One day when someone does my cataract surgery, I'm sure I'm going to be super happy. But, you know, I'm going to be super involved, too. I'm going to want to have a beautiful rexus, a beautiful incision. Remember what I say, that's your signature. I will definitely want to be to the surgery. And I'll definitely choose a monovogal lens. And I'll likely stick with at least some degree of myopia. Although hopefully in the future we'll have an accommodating eye well. Here's the end of the case here. You can see we put in some triamcinolone, just a little wisp of it. Also a little bit of dilute myostat, which is carbocal. Here's a sponge here with some anesthetic to help seal up the incisions. And we also put a small aliquot of preservative-free moxifloxin for endophthalmitis prophylaxis. Incisions are sealed up beautifully, nicely constructed, barely nicking the lumbar vessels. Pressure's a little high there. Maybe just tap the seal up. There we go. Get the pressure where we want it. And we're done with the case. Thanks for watching. Remember, check out retinarounds.com or channel. So much great material. You'll love it.